Alex Graham Hagee, and this is Our Heritage. I grew up in a small community here in Gray County, and so the history and the economics and, and the lifestyle of those little places has always fascinated me. And how these things have changed over time is, of course, a major part of our heritage. So I was lucky enough to meet somebody who uh, can offer some really interesting perspectives on that process. And today I'm sitting there uh, here with her. This is Alda McCauley. Hi, Alda. How are you doing? Hi, fine, thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, funnily enough, I, I, uh, the uh, small community I grew up in was Kimberly, and it turned out that you actually grew up uh, just uh, just kitty corner from that over at Heathcote. That's right. Yeah. When I we when I was a kid, uh, we I used to my grandparents would tell me about all the businesses that used to be in Kimberly, which when I was there was very much a retirement community. Just just people living there. There was the library. Uh, but uh, that's uh, not always been uh, the case. What, what was it like in, in Heathcote? Was it? Well, there was two or three stores, two blacksmiths, chopping mill, and uh, several churches in the little village. And uh, other than that, one big store. Mm -hmm. And then it um, went into... Uh, one store and then it, it served the whole community ah so now it goes yeah and uh and kimberly was uh, was a pretty happening place from what you told me that was the the place to go for a for a big party yeah well they had them in heathcote too oh, yeah? mm -hmm. <laughs> we used to go skating at the uh, outdoor rink ah, in nice. heathcote yeah. now you were uh, living on a farm at the time I yes understand. it was about mm. two and a half miles out of heathcote right now it's uh, it was it was interesting to know because my my um, aunt uh, aunt and uncle used to ha run a dairy farm. I mean they still have the farm, but uh, uh, and uh, and you drive around now and you can you can look at a farm and go okay this is a corn farm this is a cattle farm etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, time was that wasn't how it was. They were you'd do a little bit of everything. That's mixed farming, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, what was it? Ours was mixed farming. Yeah, so you milked yeah. a few cows, and you had a few pigs, and you sent your cream out, and you always had fowl. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what you were doing was uh, this. This was still uh, farming, just just for your own uh, for your own keep. More or less, yeah. yes. You canned all your vegetables that you grew and kept them over for the winter because you had no freezers or fridges or anything. So. Mm -hmm. You more or less was for your own use, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but you'd have uh, those stores were uh, were your source for the other uh, for extra things. What, what, yeah, what were you getting there? Well, um, my mother used to uh, take butter, make butter at home, and take it down to the store and sell it, and then get money so she could buy her groceries. Mm -hmm. And she done the same with her eggs now. What she got for a pound of butter was 40 cents after churning it and making it into butter and, and pounds. Okay. And eggs were about 30 cents. Per dozen? Or? Yeah, per okay. dozen. And um, two of those, now we never had bought and bread, but someone that bought bread said they were two loaves for 15 cents. And cornflakes and cereal, you never heard tell of then. It was mostly porridge, but when you could get cornflakes, you could get three boxes of cornflakes for 25 cents. Hmm. So uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I think uh, everybody who's watching right now is probably going to cringe the next time they walk into a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the wages weren't in com were in comparative with the pricing. Ah, well, that's uh, when that's you were only getting a dollar a day. Hmm. Right, uh, so that's certainly fair enough. Uh, and speaking of uh, of wages, now uh, when you uh, when you were uh, uh, done school, you ended up coming to uh, to Owen Sound to to start with. I did. Yeah. I did. How uh, what um, you uh, got? Uh, how how much how much school did you have to finish first? And well, I had only grade ten, mm -hmm. and I saw an ad in the paper and. I, for a junior clerk at the Province of Ontario Savings Office in Owen Sound, and I applied, and I didn't think I'd ever hear from them again because I was 
just had great tan and then a small out in the country. Mm -hmm. But I was called in for an interview and I got the job. Uh huh. 1947. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, now, uh, going all the way to, you know, from Heathcote to Owen Sound, uh, today that's, that's still a, you know, a respectable drive. Uh, how were you doing it? How were you getting there? Oh, journey by bus. If I went home on the weekends, I'd have to go back on the bus. Sure. My dad would meet me in Thornbury and take me out to, Heath to the farm for the weekend. And I wish the buses today were so obliging. <laughs> well. uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, they don't have them so much anymore. No. That's the pity. No. Uh, then, uh, uh, but then, so you couldn't, uh, I, you couldn't commute every day then. So no, no, mm. I boarded it in uh, own sound. Okay. Friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And I paid a uh, dollar a day for the board. Mm -hmm. If I c didn't go home on the weekends, I would babysit for them if they wished to go out to something. Mm -hmm. So in a dollar a day, and that covered living space, meals, yeah, the whole uh, the whole shebang? You're mm. And good meals. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, I would yeah. not suggest otherwise, yeah. certainly not. <laughs> All right, that is uh, that is uh, ex extraordinary that uh, because it's um, you know so hard to get public transit between towns nowadays. That's uh, right. And certainly, uh, you know, Heathcote and Kimberley are, uh, I have trouble, any time I'm away from Gray County, I have trouble explaining where Kimberley is because it's right. just not on the radar anymore. Right. So that is, um, well, that is remarkable. Where we lived was a little community called Mill Creek. Mm -hmm. And it ah. still has that name. I see. So what was, uh, so while you were, you were paying a, a dollar a day board uh, out of a salary of what? Ninety dollars a month. Oh, very respectable. And mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was, we were paid once a month at the end of the month. Ninety dollars is what I got now. Well, f starting in as junior clerk, and mm -hmm. I had to dress, pay my board, whatever out mm -hmm. of that. And uh, payment, uh, you know, most of us today we get paid. Uh, direct deposit uh, into the bank account or all that jazz, how, how does, uh, or you get, you, know, you get a stub, but uh, how did it work? We just got a check from ah, the head office. And I see. It could, wasn't put in. Your, there you was had no, to do that yourself. Yeah. Right. That's right. Everything was done by hand. All right. And we'll talk a bit more about that uh, when we come back. We're just going to take a quick break. back. So Alda, uh, you're working uh, at the uh, Province of Ontario Savings Office from 1947. Right, okay. Um, let's, uh, let's hear a bit about it because it's, uh, it's not a name one, one sees anymore, I don't believe, or no, I, I certainly haven't. No, that's true. Yeah, it's, uh, where, how, did it, uh, how did it get started? 
Well, it got started in 1922, and it was created by the United Farmers of Ontario for farmers that needed small loans and businesses that needed small loans, mm -hmm. and the larger banks wouldn't give it to them, and it was started by the farmers. And they loaned money for only one year, oh. and uh, then they went to strictly savings. So... Um, after the one year, it, it was more or less a, just a savings branch. They didn't loan mm -hmm. money or anything like they do nowadays. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. But it had a, a cooperative beginning. Uh, yeah, then. kind of. Yeah. yeah. And um, Mr. G. W. Butcher was the first manager in 1922, and he was still manager there when I started in 1947. Uh -huh. uh, where was it? It was down, uh, on, it was on Main Street, and it was just up from the, um, uh, it's about where Coates and Best used to be, I don't know, on Main Street there. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a pool room up over top. <laughs> and every little while we'd be distracted from the noise up above. Mm. And uh, then we moved, they moved up to across from the city hall, and uh, Meridium is there now. Ah. Yeah. And it had been sold out from Province of Ontario to the Jardins, and then now Meridium is in there. Once a bank, building. always a bank, I guess. Yeah, huh? I guess so. All right, and uh, when it, uh, you, were, uh, you were working there in, uh, in what position? Junior clerk. Junior clerk, that's which right. Which was to take care of the mail and filing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there was only one teller at that time mm -hmm. and one manager and uh, an accountant and uh, two, uh, two of us girls, myself and another girl. Ah, okay. One phone. One phone. <laughs> one okay. phone in the whole office. Yeah, I go into a bank today and they... Can't can't stand still without a phone ringing somewhere. Oh, that's right. Oh my goodness. Uh, and uh, so, uh, how would it, how would it compare to uh, to a bank today? What was it? Well, how did you find? When uh, I went in, the tellers tellers cage was all wired right from the bottom, right up both three sides, mm -hmm. and the top was even wired. And mm -hmm. then you had a little space in the front that you could give the money out and so on. Uh -huh. And uh, no one was supposed to go in the teller's cage but the teller. Uh, very high security. Mm -hmm. And um, it was quite a, looked like a jail almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> you, my goodness. You had a door on it. And right. Yeah. Mm, not leaving it to chance though, eh? Uh, and uh, the, the car, you know, the customers were, uh, you know, you can get, uh, you can get so many different kinds of people in a bank today, but it sounded like w uh, it, sounded, it sounds like it would be the the uh, was it still the farmers and small business people using it? Yes, and the older people seemed to like it. Ah, okay. Yeah, because they I don't know what just seemed to be older people, because mm -hmm. I guess they didn't need the money to borrow, so they'd come to our bank, like, and mm -hmm. more savings. And they did pay a bit higher interest to being government. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, well, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, did, uh, <coughs> and uh, what, was it, what was, like, the, the, the customer serv uh, service experience li uh, like? It was it, uh, like, in... A bank today, you know, you, it can get so crowded, it's, uh, there's a necessarily a certain amount of hurry up and wait. Well, but, uh, they didn't have too many accounts in that bank at that time mm -hmm. due to it was just starting in a strictly a savings. So right. you got to know your customers really well and had time for them. And oh, how nice. Yeah. And uh, when you were doing, and you know, again, uh, again, just uh, I'm trying to draw the comparison with uh, with uh, modern banks that uh, people like me have to uh, have to use. Uh, um, of course, in, in addition to the endless banks of telephones, you've also got endless banks of computers. Now, me thinks there were not too uh, too many computers there when you started out, eh? None. No. Not <laughs> not in '47. Mm. No, you yeah. done everything by hand. You wrote your bank check. 
bank book up by hand. And mm -hmm. What about the arithmetic? <laughs> oh, well, the old adding machine was a great big clumsy looking old thing and you had to punch the numbers in and then you had to pull the handle to <laughs> add it all up. And mm -hmm. Spits out a bit of tape at the top. Yeah, sort of thing. So right. that's right. You had to yeah, roll the tape mm -hmm. on it. Right. And they had the old straight pens with the nibs that and the ink, and they like had a, like a pot of ink. You don't yeah, know that. yeah. Oh it was in the on the desk, right? right? And uh, you, ha I had to change the nibs every day. <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, th then, how long were you at the bank? I was at the bank three years th then, mm -hmm. and then I, 1950. Uh, I got married. I left the bank and got married and went farming with my husband out on a farm of 150 acres near Walters Falls. I see. All right. And uh, was it uh, was it to draw the comparison to uh, to your farm uh, that you uh, grew up on in Heathcote? Was it uh, was it similar to that one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. We milked cows and mixed farming. A little bit of everything. Yes. Very mm -hmm. good. All right, and uh, and that was and uh, then we'll uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and then I want to uh, ask a few more questions uh, about uh, the bank because you didn't uh, stay away for too long, from no. it, did you? <laughs> Twenty years. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see about that. All right, so we'll uh, we're gonna take a quick break and come right back. back. So uh, Alda, you had uh, the farm in Walters Falls, uh, you and your husband, and, uh, and uh, from uh, what uh, you uh, told me, it started out as a bit of a fixer-upper. Yes, it was. There mm -hmm. was uh, everything needed fixing. New roof on the barn, new barn doors, everything that had mm -hmm. been rented for some time and had never been fixed up at all so we went at it okay made a farm of it <laughs> congratulations and uh, then uh, eventually uh, you have had uh, the province of Ontario savings office calling you back as it were <laughs> 20 years after mm -hmm. I had got married and had raised two of a family they were in high school and um, Jack uh, and I were do doing the f most of the farming and choring and one thing and another. And Mr. Matthias, Mr. Gordon Matthias, he was the accountant when I was worked there in 47. Mm -hmm. He phoned me one day out of the blue and said, how's chances to get you to come back to work for the summer? I really need some help. There's got girls going on holidays and got girls on pregnancy leaves. And 
And I said, no, I, how can I ever go back to a bank after 20 years? I said, it's a long way from milk and cows to <laughs> banking. And mm -hmm. he said, well, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a thought. Just even help me out for the summer. Mm -hmm. So in 1970, um, the milk producers and the um, milking rules changed that you had to have coolers and you had to have so many different things to be able to sell milk. Mm -hmm. So m my husband and I decided that we would go mixed farming instead of uh, milking and shipping it. Mm -hmm. And that way I had more time out of the barn and so Jack said, I think it'd be great for you to go back for the summer. So I thought, well, I'll try it and see how hard it is. And I went back in 1950. No, 1970. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was it uh, and just for the summer was the idea. That was right, just mm -hmm. for the summer holidays. Did it turn out that way? No, <laughs> it was a long summer. Yeah. <laughs> I was I retired in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so much for that plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it, uh, I thought I I remember finding it. Uh, uh, quite uh, quite uh, funny that uh, that you'd been uh, been on the farm and working at the bank because that almost uh, the, I've got an aunt for whom that uh, that uh, story uh, would also apply um, and because uh, she was she she was my banker when I was you know just a little kid with my, right. my first savings account uh, and uh, and how had the, had the bank changed a great deal yes it had changed some we still had the the wire cages mm -hmm. and everything was written up by hand. Mm -hmm. But in the, we had two tellers then mm -hmm. and it went to three tellers. Mm -hmm. But um, to some amazement for me, there was a handgun in the cage with our cash. Mm -hmm. And it was loaded, mm -hmm. there was one blank shell in it. Ah. But it was locked up every night with the with her cash, mm -hmm. and um, I never saw them used. Thank no, goodness. Yeah. No, thank, thank heavens goodness. for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Butcher, the manager, he always says it's it's better to be a live coward than a dead her hero. So if they get robbed. Give them the money and stay alive. <laughs> I, I, I can I can sympathize with that point of view. Uh, <laughs> my goodness. Um, and uh, and and so you would you would have been there for uh, for where the had the computers come in when you got back or did they come in? Later? Uh, no, shortly after I went back, the computers started. What made oh, okay. it really hard for me? Oh really? Okay. Yeah, to get onto a computer when you hadn't yeah. had anything. Yeah. No. Um, you know, especially again, like the people um, my age are a little bit older. They have they probably have a, a particular mental image of a computer, and I'm just wondering what did a computer look like in 1970? Oh, it was fairly big, like yeah. it's set between two tellers used it. Okay. When they got rid of the cages. Right. And we got rid of the guns too. Well, that, that <laughs> that's all to the good, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't, you know, it was a bit more than just like the keyboard and screen oh, arrangement yeah, you get yeah. now. So. That's right, but mm -hmm. it sure advanced a lot in the 20 years I was there. I can imagine. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so um, you were retiring in 1990, and at that point, uh, Province of Ontario Savings Office is still still in business, but Pro yes. um, as far as it doesn't appear to be anymore, Do you, what became no. of it? Uh, the government sold out their branches, and uh, they went out of banking. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, so the one across uh, the branch here, acro across from City Hall, became, uh, what did it become first? Uh, the Jardins, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And then it's Meridian, but and then there was, I don't know whether there was another one in there or not. Mm -hmm. It seems that they were changing quite a bit right. after I yeah. retired. Yeah, kind of seen. I guess the buildings you build a uh, into a, build a bank in. There's only so many other things you can do with them besides make banks out of them. Well. Uh, the <laughs> now uh, and uh, another uh, uh, point I wanted to uh, draw is uh, as you were making 
uh, $90 a month when, in, when you first went 47, to, uh, yeah, yeah, in 47. In 70, how, what, what, was it very different? Yeah, the wages went up. The wages went up. Thank okay. goodness. <laughs> yeah. But of course, probably the cost of living had gone up a yes, bit as well. Yes, an so. awful lot. Mm. Yeah, that's quite, for sure quite from so. 1950 mm -hmm. on to 1970, farming was uh, not too bad. Okay. And the wages went up. And Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and now Walters Falls, of course, isn't quite as far afield from Owen Sound as is uh, Heathcote. But uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, by that point, uh, you could you could commute in a car uh, and to to get to Owen Sound. To Walters Falls. To, yeah. Yes, I went back and forth every day for twenty mm. years, mm -hmm. and we had storms something like. <laughs> Something we like are having today, this yeah. year, yeah, but we're really, uh, not quite as bad, maybe, but you used to have to uh, keep you uh, keep you sharp, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Mm. Up over those hills at Walters mm. Falls. <laughs> yeah, were the were were buses still running that you could uh, at that time? No, not from Walters Falls. They yeah. were from Heathcote. I okay, they kept going. Thornberry. Ah, uh, okay, so they kept going right you up had to until go to then. Thornberry to get the bus. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it's uh, what about uh, Owen Sound itself? Is it uh, is it very different? Uh, what very different. Main mm. Street is what when I came back to Owen Sound after I'd been away for five years, even mm -hmm. it uh, the Main Street. I hardly knew where I was on Main Street because mm -hmm. the stores had changed that much. Quite so. Yeah. Um, do you get back to Heathcote at all anymore? Oh, yes. Okay. I have family down there, nieces and nephews and there cousins. You right. How do you find, uh, how do you find it? Uh, it's, they've got, you know, it and Kimberly, I know, are both quieting down a oh, good deal. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, I, they, um, there's just one st store, and it isn't a store. It's a bake shop now where you uh. can go in and buy treats. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, there isn't uh, much going on in Heathcote anymore. How do you feel about that? Well, that's life, eh? Ah, quite so. Yeah, everybody mm. goes to the bigger places to buy things nowadays. And mm. Yeah, it's easier uh, easier to get around, uh, I suppose. Oh, yeah, mm. a lot easier. Well, it's a uh, um, remarkable perspective on uh, on the how have the different ways and way things have changed. What money will buy you? How uh, how the economics of Gray County have shifted around. That's right. So uh, I'm thank you, thank you very much to, for for telling us this. It, it hits close to home for me because I, I you know I've got family who were uh, who were experiencing uh, experiencing the same thing. Uh, but uh, but it'd be uh, an education for uh, I know I think for uh, viewers my age to uh, uh, to think this is uh, this is where it, where it all came from. Yes, as it were. well, yeah. it uh, was a good life though. I uh, 